Hello there. The purpose for this video is to explain how we can extract a profile from a contour map. Here you can see a contour map that has a 50 foot contour interval and the squares that you can see are one mile by one mile. 50 foot contour interval simply means that the vertical spacing between two contour lines is 50 feet. I want you to notice that the contour lines are shown with two different line weights. The heavy line weights are known as index contours. And the index contours are 250 feet apart vertically or five contour intervals apart. That five contour interval separation is pretty typical. My mouse on my screen here indicates a contour of 1,250 feet elevation. The next one, the next contour interval is at 1,500. All the other lines are separated from their neighboring lines by a 50 foot vertical difference. My goal here is to develop a profile of the line that you see here down in the left lower left corner of the map it goes from point A following this dashed line up to point B. There is a simple way to do this using the horizontal scale of this map. Let's do just exactly that. What I'll do is in this case take a simple piece of paper I will affix it to this map so its edge lines up with the line AB. And then at each location where a contour line crosses line AB, I will make a line on my blank sheet of paper that is perpendicular to the edge. This way I am marking off every location where a contour crosses my profile line. The spacing is irregular on my blank sheet, just like the spacing of the contours is irregular along line AB. This forces the horizontal scale of my profile drawing to match the horizontal scale of my map. Then the next thing I must do is consider the range of elevations that I will see on this contour. Having marked the elevations on the contours for this map, I know that the elevation range goes from as low as 1,100 feet up to 1,700 feet. So I have shown on here horizontal lines evenly spaced that will give me all of those elevations. So obviously these run uh, parallel to each other and they are horizontal planes, aren't they? These horizontal planes represent the planes that slice through the Earth's surface and give us these contour lines. So we are only seeing where these planes intersect the ground surface along the profile line AB. So what I have done is at each one of the vertical lines on my sheet I have placed a black dot at the intersection of the vertical line and the elevation to which my vertical line attaches on the contours. For instance, on this line, this very first line, it is drawn from the 1500 contour. So I simply reach down here to where my vertical line intersects the 1500 contour, and I place a dot. Same thing here and here. You might think, hmm, how can that be? I'll show you. Be patient. Then you can see consistent with the contours, my dots rise and fall. 
may rise and fall and rise and fall and rise again. At this point, the hard work is almost done. The challenge here is simply to select a vertical scale that gives you the information with the appearance you want. You know that the purpose of the exaggerated scale is to provide clarity. The next step was simply to connect the dots with appropriate lines. If you recall, my first three points on my first three vertical lines we're all at the same elevation. And you can see the results here. If I go back to the previous view, you'll, you'll see those. All three of the very first dots are at 1,500. So switching back to my drawn profile, let's make sense of why that is. As I move from the left to the right across my profile, I think you can understand that the ground surface, as indicated by the contours, inside the closed contour of 1500 here, has to rise above that elevation. You see, between any two contour lines, there is a 50-foot vertical separation. And a lot can happen in that 50 feet, and some of it we have to infer. So we have inferred from this in the context that Earth's surface rises above. Then here it dips down before contacting the 1500 line on its way up the side. This type of formation in the context of this map is what we call a saddle. That is, we have a slope as it descends from right to left here, and in the grander scheme of things keeps descending, there is a, an isolated hump on this slope. And between the hump and the slope is a formation we call a saddle. Well, we have that saddle formation showing up in a few places on this drawing, and you can see some fairly flat slopes and some fairly steep slopes. At this location that you see here directly below Swift Creek, the contour, if, if my sheet of paper weren't here, you would see that a contour uh, crosses Swift Creek right here at line AB. The flow line of Swift Creek shows right at a contour. There is another creek over here about a mile and a half to the right, and its elevation is interpolated between two elevation planes, between the 1250 and the 1300 elevation plane, based on the contours. So this gives us a simple way to generate a profile from a contour map.